everyone, it's Kylie from Sam Altoona. Um, today we're going to do um, another art lesson on Shirley Goldfarb. Um, just like we said in the last lesson, she is a painter that was originally from Altoona, Pennsylvania. And she actually has artwork from all over the world, like she has artwork all over the world, sorry. And she does kind of more of an abstract thing, which is really cool. I'm going to show you a picture of her so that you can get associated with who she is and um, while I'm doing that, make sure to grab some paper, markers, crayons, colored pencils, whatever you need and we'll get started soon. There we go. And that's Shirley Goldfarb. Um, she learned art in New York City and then she actually moved to Paris, France I believe. Um, she lived in France. I want to say Paris, but I might be wrong on that. Definitely fact check me. And then these are some of her artworks. I really enjoy them because of how vibrant they are. And also, they're kind of just mesmerizing naturally. You just kind of get lost in them with the color, which is really cool. So last lesson, we just kind of made one, and I focused more on warm colors on what I made. So this is the one that we made last lesson. Um, you could have grabbed whatever colors you needed, that would have been fine. Um, I chose these ones, which is more of a warmer color palette. So I figured today, what we could do is work on a cooler color palette. Sorry, I'm like messing with the camera, it's going everywhere. Um, so basically, we're going to be focusing on color families. So color families are, based, are the separations of warm colors, cool colors, and neutral colors. Warm colors are colors of the sun, kind of, so like you know, reds, oranges, yellows more so. And then cool colors are colors of water. So like your blues, your your deep greens, like ocean greens, you know, those kind of colors. And so those are what we've been focusing on. We're gonna focus on cool colors today. The colors I'm gonna use are actually right here. I'm using mostly all blues and a little bit of blue greens here. Um, but what you'll need is to pick four colors. Um, try to pick a primary color, um, so like blue, red, or yellow. Uh, I Try to focus more on blue. That's the one I would probably pick since we're focusing on cool colors. Um, and then pick three other colors. If you don't have enough to have four, you can always go with less too, as long as you have two or more. That's the big thing. So, let's go ahead and get started. So what, the way we started last time is kind of how I'm going to start again. So try to utilize all of the paper while you're making it, but make sure to have fun. I like making these because they're actually really easy to get lost in, and it's one of my favorite things. So I'm focusing on repeating the same type of mark over and over. Um, I want more of this rectangular look, so I'm going to try to achieve that. Uh, and repeat it constantly. Um, so if you want to do a different shape, you can. You can do circles, you can do just slashes with your colored pencil. Whatever works best for you and makes you the happiest. And then the way I start, I start by putting marks randomly. And if you make a mistake, like a little lash like that or something, that's fine. Those happen. Um, the best thing about art is being able to work around that and still come up with something you love. There you go. And then what I try to do is I try to add colors throughout. And then that way you get kind of an idea of where you want to locate things. I'm do like that. There we go. And so what I'm doing is each place that I placed a little a little dot like that, I am going through with each color that I have and touching it with another color out of the four I chose. Also, let me know what colors you're choosing in the comments below. I would absolutely love to see them.
I also need a teal. I need this one. And it's okay to repeat the same color directly over top of itself. It, we want to see the different um, effects that the layering of the colors have. And basically when you're talking about layering and art, it's kind of similar to how you talk about it in baking and other things too. Um, it just basically means what you're placing directly over top of another thing. Um, so in this case, we're placing more ink directly over top of the ink we already put. And if it looks disorganized, that is exactly what you want for right now. Everything will lead into each other um, eventually, even though you have a lot of white space at the moment. So that's perfectly okay. And what I do is when I notice there's a lot of white spots in between the different patches you're starting to create, add a little bit of color in between it helps you draw yourself into there. Did you guys decide what colors you wanted to use? Um, let me know what you're using down below. That would be great to see. And then also, as you're going along, um, it is good to actually go ahead and just throw the color right directly on top of a huge um, block of color. It actually helps with the effect that you're going for and makes it um, a lot more interesting to look at whenever it's finished. And then as you're going along, if you notice you start getting a lot of color over in this area, as you go along, try to add a little bit more um, markers over here 
uh, well, marks over here to get yourself leading into the rest of the paper. It's kind of cool. I always think of um, this quote that she said. Um, it, I can't remember it exactly verbatim, but essentially what she said is she's walking across the canvas with the colors that she's using and the paints. Also, if you guys are following along with these lessons, um, feel free to send in what you've completed from any of our lessons on the Sam Altoona page um, to altoona at sama-art.org. Um, we're having an exhibition in our front windows, and what we're going to do is we're going to print out the work that you guys create, and we're going to put it in our gallery windows for people who are walking past to look at. Um, it's called Gallery A Go Go. And it will be up from, I believe, June 15th until June 30th. Also, as you're going along with, um, with putting your marks on the paper, don't get too focused on where you're putting them. Kind of let it come naturally through your arm. Let it flow through you. Let, let the colors lead you to where they want to go kind of like that. Um, it's kind of like they're talking to each other. If you guys are trying um, more of this lesson out at home too, like say you make multiple of these, um, something cool that is fun to do is look at something that has specific colors that you really like and try to base your colors off of what you're looking at. So 
not necessarily like shaped like that because this is more of an abstract art thing where um, which abstract art is art that doesn't really represent exactly what you're seeing it uses more so like shapes and forms and colors um, and mark making to achieve what it's trying to create uh, but it's kind of fun to see what different colors you can pick out from different places I believe Shirley Goldfarb actually used a lot of the colors that were in her immediate, um, I want to say vicinity, like where she lived. She used a lot of the colors that she saw throughout her life and days um, when she was living in France to influence her pieces like this. I'm like knocking things off my easel here. I feel I actually kind of like how this is starting to layer out. Um, I gotta be careful though because I think I'm making a lot of the same patterns. like I don't know if this happens to you guys but whenever I make art occasionally if I'm making art that's a little bit more um, intuitive I tend to repeat the same patterns without realizing it I don't know if anyone else has that problem sometimes it's not a problem I don't think sometimes I think it actually helps it just depends on what you're making really We'll go back to that and fill up the white spaces because our end goal is to just cover everything that's white and make sure it's not there anymore. At least that's my end goal. If you guys actually want to leave white and you think that helps what you're making, feel free to do that. Art is what you make it, literally, and it's about what you want and what you think makes your piece cool or, well, not even just cool, just makes your piece speak to you. So if you want to leave white spaces, go ahead and do that. Like, that is fully up to you. Um, I always try to make sure to cover the entire paper. Um, sometimes I fail in that, though. Because a lot of the time, if you leave the white space, it almost makes it something, makes you feel like it's something that's not finished. But if you can utilize, like, the space that you don't use in what you're making, that's definitely a really good skill to have. And then as you're going along and getting further along, always feel free to go back to where you started too um, and add more touches of what you want in colors. Um, that is always really good to do um, because it helps you take in the whole piece instead of just what you're looking at. You want to continually look at everything kind of from a distance when you're making stuff because it's really easy to get lost into what you're making. 
I tend to do that a lot. Okay, so basically what you're seeing me do is go back through and make, um, add colors to specific areas to kind of create a little bit more interest in the area, at least what I think is interesting. I feel like this, it's been almost a half an hour. I feel like it just kind of flew by. Like, that's pretty surprising. There we go. So I'm going to leave that at that for right now, and I'll finish it up later. Um, feel free to finish up your pieces as um, you feel comfortable. You don't have to rush it or anything. Um, please think about sending them in to us at altoonatsama-art.org. I'll leave a um, I'll leave that down below in the comments after this lesson. Uh, also, if you guys enjoy our art lessons that we've been posting, um, think about donating to SAMA. We absolutely love doing these lessons. We absolutely love helping uh, bring art to our community, and donations always help make that happen. And it doesn't even have to be a lot. It can just be a little bit. Um, and if you don't want to donate, think about watching our programs and attending our events in the future whenever everything's back to normal. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys next time. Bye!